Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Viji Moon Prashad for inviting me for this session. And I'll be presenting interesting cases of functional dyspepsia with a special reference to the role of electrogastrography, which is a novel approach for assessment and cure of these patients. The first case is a young female who has a postprandial distress syndrome with gastroparesis like symptoms. 19 year old female who was symptomatic for 18 months, presented with recurrent vomitings immediately after the meals, no history suggestive of, of, of a mechanical gastric outlet obstruction, postprandial bloating, early stity, there was a weight loss of 7 kgs, history of amenorrhea for last 8 months, and physical examination was unremarkable. There's no response to PPI and prokinetics for last one year, which she was taking. And now she was being treated by a psychiatrist for psychogenic vomiting and depression by antipsychotics and antidepressants. However, there's no response to these medications also. All her blood work, including thyroid was normal. And a CT scan was also done, which had not shown any evidence of organic disease. A C13 urea breath test done by us was negative for H. pylori. She had underwent an endoscopy one year back, which showed pre-pyloric erosions with chronic gastritis H. pylori pattern that on NBI, there was loss of collecting venules. A year later, when she came to us, since she had gastroparesis like symptoms, we did a gastric emptying time, which was normal, 69% uh, at one hour. A EGG showed a good accommodation that she was able to ingest 500 ml of water in five minutes. And postprandial EGG showed a hypernormal 3 CPM activity at 10 minutes and 20 minutes and 30 minutes, which was suggestive of a functional gastric outlet obstruction. So we took this patient for a balloon dilatation and did a 20 mm balloon dilatation for two minutes, two sessions, one minute at a gap of one minute. And this balloon dilatation was so dramatic that she was able to stop all her psychiatric medications. There was dramatic improvement with complete resolution of her vomitings and intake also improved with weight gain, though mild bloating persisted. She had menses for the first time after eight months post dilatation and EGG one month post dilatation normalized with hypernormal 3 CPM activity, which was not present. So this was done one month exactly after uh, post dilatation and which showed that there is normalization of hypernormal 3 CPM activity. Second case is a 49 year old female with presented with postprandial heaviness, bloating, nausea for two to three years, no history of pain, vomitings or weight loss. She had undergone hysterectomy in the past and ultrasound showed a fatty liver with fibro scan showing S3 uh, stetosis and non-significant fibrosis. An endoscopy done by us in 2016 was normal. A C13 urea breath test done this time when she presented to us was positive for H. pylori. This was endoscopy which was done in December 2016 which showed a normal uh, stomach. At that time, MNBI had shown normal pits, subepithelial capillary network and collecting venules. We did a EGG this time, again showed a good accommodation. She was able to ingest 750 ml of water. However, again, her EGG showed a hypernormal 3 CPM activity, activity, which was suggestive of a functional gastric outlet obstruction. So in this case, rather than dilating, we thought of giving her H. pylori eradication first. And we usually follow a protocol of high dose rebiprazole. We start one week before adding the antibiotics. And we use high dose omaxicillin three to four grams in three to four divided dosages with levoflox 500 milligram once a day for two weeks. She showed a successful eradication four weeks uh, after with a C13 urea breath test, which was negative for H. pylori. And one month post H. pylori eradication, surprisingly her uh, EGG had also normalized However, we could just see that at 20 minutes, there is increase in bradygastria with fall in 3 CPM, which is reflective of some reflux event or venting, which is happening. So this came as a bit surprise that this functional gastric outlet obstruction also improves with H. pylori eradication. Though we have three cases like this, that H. pylori can also present as a functional gastric outlet obstruction. 
Case number three, 50 year old female with history of postprandial bloating, distension, early stity, nausea and reflux symptoms for four to five years with partial response to PPIs and proganetics, which she had been taking for a long time. Now, also along with PPS, she is on antidepressants and alprazolam for last three years. There's a past history of hemorrhoidectomy and history of dyslipidemias. A C13 urea breath test was negative and endoscopy was unremarkable. Her gastric emptying time showed evidence of gastroparesis with 48% emptying at two hours. EGG showed again a good accommodation with 800 ml of water which you could take in five minutes. Postprandial EGG again was suggestive of a hypernormal 3 CPM activity at 20 minutes, which was suggestive of a functional gastric outlet obstruction. So we dilated her again uh, till 20 mm for two minutes, uh, twice at a gap of one minute. And one month after her dilatation, her get gastric emptying time had normalized with 81% emptying at one hour. EGG again showed a very good response with hypernormal 3 CPM had normalized. And what was important is that she was able to leave, go off all her medications. And there was such a dramatic improvement in all her symptoms. So EGG plays a very important role in these patients of uh, functional dyspepsia, especially who present with gastroparesis-like symptoms. And here there's a subgroup of almost 20 to 25% of patients who have a hypernormal 3 CPM, which reflects antropyloric duodenal dysfunction or a functional gastric outlet obstruction, and they respond very well to balloon dilatation. Second subgroup with a normal 3 CPM, we can have a GERD, related gastroparesis, where there is a loss of gastric pressure gradient because of the GERD, and you correct the GERD, their dyspeptic symptoms improve. And especially these patients will present as more dyspepsia predominant symptoms rather than having a GERD symptoms. And secondly, a subgroup with nausea, vomiting, and dyspepsia, they respond with a normal 3 CPM, they would respond very well to our prokinetic medications. The most difficult group to treat is a hyponormal 3 CPM, where the number of ICCs are reduced because of certain uh, uh, secondary illnesses like infections, metabolic, endocrine, collagen vascular connective tissue diseases. And these patients will respond very poorly to prokinetics and to gastric stimulating therapies. Thank you very much.